Welcome to the eight past ten men's club. It's a, it's a boudoir. <laughs> it's a boudoir. It's a boudoir. <laughs> we have the uh, the belly dancers behind here. Sorry. We have we have never discussed our beautiful curtains, but uh, welcome, Velvet Club. Velvet Club. Welcome yeah. to the eight past ten podcast. And we're now trying to be a bit more serious, more grown up and serious. Although, yes. are we ever serious in this talk? I don't know. No. It's, uh, no. It's always hopefully a, not. It's always a pleasant mix of uh, chit chatting and. Uh, what do you call it? You have Foolish a, behavior. You have a name for that. Uh, no. Do I? Yeah. Uh, yeah no. I forgot. We'll get back. Yeah. We'll get to that. Um, today, what we are discussing is something that goes for, I think, basically every watch collector in the world. Because luckily, we're all different and we all have different tastes and we make different choices. But when you grow more, you develop your taste and your choices and you get into some kind of comfort zone. That's that's pretty clear. So you choose, okay, I'm a Rolex collector. Sure. I'm very much into indies. I like pilot watches. Everybody has his own preferences. Sure. And what we're going to discuss, but it's just simply an open talk on how you get into your comfort zone and how you get out of it. Sure. Um, and the reason why... For me, that it makes sense because I have I, I see you with your collection, with your collecting habits, with your personal tastes, moving into a direction, and and a lot of watches that you buy and that mm -hmm. I see come by that makes true sense. I think okay, that's very that makes sense that Christian buys such a watch. For instance, you're not a gold guy. You're not a guy with a rose gold with yellow gold pieces. I like the, the the white metal. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you show up with an amazing watch. It is an amazing yeah. watch. This is the uh, Vacheron Constantin uh, Historics, Historics uh, American 1921. Supposedly, they did uh, uh, 12 pieces of this uh, weird-looking watch. And I think around 2008, I think it's around there, 2006, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they reintroduced it and they also introduced the caliber 44 00, of course, with the Pension de Genève uh, seals, and, and uh, they introduced it in this piece. So the crown is up here, so it doesn't interfere on your wrist when you drive, supposedly. Yeah. yeah. And um, so everything is skewed like 90 degrees. 45. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I don't know. it's, it's 45. It's 45, 45 of course right? it is, yeah. 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 And I was out on my motorbike a couple of days after I bought it, and uh, it does make sense. Yeah. It does make sense. You know, I was wearing my Bellstaff leather jacket and my big gloves and stuff like that, and this just comes out, and I'm like, yeah, this works. And it really does work. I'm not a gold guy. Uh, as I told you, I, li I like the the white metal, so it's white, gold, or platinum, if, if anything. But this, of course, you can get a platinum version. It's just outrageously expensive and yeah. limited and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah. I, yeah. It, it was never for me. I saw this watch on the wrist of, uh, of a Greek colleague at a party at SIH many, many, many years ago. He was a, a, a classy dresser, three-piece suit, kind of classy dresser with a big twist, you know, wearing big gold rings and having a bit of a older rock and roll dressing style. Yeah. And he wore this watch. I was like, that's a cool look. Once in a while, you, you are introduced to timepieces that you never really considered until you see it on a guy or girl, that you go, that looks great on him or her. I like that look. I like that whole what's going on there. And uh, since then, it's been very high on my wanted list. Again, it's not a safe buy. It's not a Rolex. It's not a Cartier. Uh, it's not a Patek or an, an AP. You know, the, the obvious choices. It's a Vacheron, uh, American 1921. But was it, was it an impulsive buy for you or was it something that has grown on you over, the, over a longer period and you knew that one day you would have this one? I, I have been after it, you know, not hunting it. I've okay. been after it. Yeah. So with a trade... Yes, it was a 5711 Nautilus steel blue dial that I got in another trade. I'm, I'm not into that watch at all, but for some weird reason. Yeah. I think the internet killed it. Yeah. Uh, the blogosphere killed the 5711. I have no thrill with that watch. No. I didn't even put it on my wrist. 
Actually, I know collectors who had it already in 2008 yeah. and are now keeping it in their safes yeah. because they're not comfortable wearing it <laughs> for for I- image reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You no, know, I understand that. And and also, I, I, you know, when we're talking about my collecting habits, I usually, uh, you know, I, I, I drive a car uh, that basically screams fuck zombies. And, you know, I like to wear a watch where I can chop wood or something like that. You know, I... Uh, I yeah, yeah, well... <laughs> No, can't but say Corona, right? So I wanted. I, I was. I was off the dress watch thing. I was like, I'm. I'm never gonna have an, another dress watch. I had the Langon Suna Datograph Perpetual Calendar. The absolutely stunning watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one. One thing, I I couldn't read the dial. No. I mean, the the every complication was too small, except for the date. The Zeitwerk is an amazing watch, probably the most important modern watch in long history, uh, but very bulky. Yeah. So, and and the thing is, I would usually wear my my Lang und Söhne when I went to a watch fair, yeah. or I've, I was doing my public speak, uh, speeches, yeah. which I have not been doing any of this year due to COVID. So the Lange has just been sitting in my vault and sitting and sitting and sitting. So I thought, I can't afford just to have expensive watches sitting in the vault. So I traded it, and this gentleman, he traded it with a 5711, which I thought, well, you know, I can sell that right away. So the gentleman who bought the 5711 mm-hmm. had this brand spanking new, still in foil. You know, even the the, the, the booklet was still in a separate box and stuff like that it's it was brand new i was the first one to strap it on and i was like finally finally Finally. i have this one it's not a patek it's not a rolex it's not my usual go-to watch brands and it's a dress watch man i congratulate you (laughs) on returning to the dress watches and 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 (laughs) oh it feels good growing a bit more into your collecting uh habits and your yeah it's a beautiful watch and the funny thing is that I know, and that that goes for me as well. You're very anecdotal or anecdotical. How do you call it? And me mm-hmm. too. You like the stories yeah. behind watches. Absolutely. You like stories. So the, 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 actually, if I hear you right, that this you came on this watch because of meeting a guy who had a certain yeah who made an impression on you, including the watch. Actually, two guys made the impression. Jack Foster of Wadinki. Okay. Uh, Jack and I we were in uh, Miami with uh, Mont Blanc. Yeah. And he is not the guy I would connect with uh, Vassal. Uh, I would say he's a grand psycho kind of guy. Yeah, uh, I don't know him that well, but yeah. That and I, I, I went to Jack and he was on his wrist. I go like, dude, that, that is a cool watch. Yeah. That's a very exotic choice for you, Jack. He was like, it's not mine. I wish I could afford it, but I can't, but I love it. Yeah. I was like, yeah. And I was reminded again how much I like this watch. That was like it's two a, or three years ago. It's a funny and a, anecdotal. But for me, it sometimes having an appearance on someone's wrist yeah. uh, has the opposite. I had, uh, you know, I'm I'm a Juana fan already yeah. since '99, and I think it was two years ago. I uh, was on one of our trips uh-huh. going home, uh-huh. easy yet, and uh, it was quite crowded. And I got in. And uh, usually, when you when you are boarding, the, the people on the first row they already sit, so you you just pass them. Uh-huh. And on the first row, there was this guy. He was I couldn't. He was a hippie. He was an an, an grown up hippie, like in his sixties. He had white pants. He had uh, Adidas uh, uh, sneakers. He had a ponytail. He had a beard, and on his wrist, he had a jour de chronometre bleu. Wow. That's that's a cool hippie. <laughs> yeah, that was exactly my thought. That was a cool hippie. <laughs> no, but it's it's you have to be reminded once in a while. It's like if yeah. let's just say with that we hypothetically we go to a Madonna concert. Yeah. The day after we start buying her old records, you yeah. are reminded about all that, and you want to get into that feeling again. So that that's you know how artists they make their money. They you buy into the back library, no, but right? I, I also think that and. Uh, d- Especially the more expensive and the more exclusive the watches get, uh, the less you will see them in the flesh. We we discuss watches and we have 
are in the lucky circumstances that we see a lot of watches sure. uh, on our wrist and on press events and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But even for us, it's it's quite a rare sight if you see a watch like your Vacheron or yeah. Journe literally on someone's wrist. Mm -hmm. uh, you you usually, if you go out to the better places, you see the Rolex, occasionally a uh, Patek, a lot of Omegas. But this is really uh, an event. When you see this, wa this a watch like this on someone's wrist, yeah. for a connoisseur, for a collector, that's an event. Yeah. So that heavily yeah. influences you. Absolutely. Yeah. That's true in the wild influencing, not Instagram. Not the, exactly. That's the, actually, yeah, we do it ourselves, yeah. putting it on the wrist and making beautiful pictures because sure, that sure. is an important platform for everybody to be inspired. Absolutely. And, and that works. But yeah. uh, being in, in the real, it's it's nice to know that, that and that, that was really a positive uh, experience for me, the, the variety of people, because I might have an idea about how a journal a client should look like, mm -hmm. but... The reality is, of course, completely different. Yeah. Yeah. And that's only good. Absolutely. I mean, it's funny how you see stuff in the airplane because you, you sit so close for so long. Yeah. And I was on my way to Geneva uh, and uh, that was this Swedish gentleman in front of me, obviously with his PA or some kind of secretary or something like that. So he was like very relaxed, you know, mm -hmm. white t-shirt, slacks, you know, a little overweight, long gray hair, just basically a man who, who was like comfortable. Mm -hmm. And at some point he was like stretching and the watch came towards me. I'm like, that is a Rolex Daytona that has been worn a lot. That was like all scratched up and dinged. I'm like, dude bought this watch because he likes it. And of course he can not afford it. Dude wears it. And I, I had an instant liking towards that gentleman. Yeah. He could not care about resale value. Fuck it. I'm wearing this watch. I like that blue dial, that ice blue dial. I like that brown serochrome uh, uh, Chachimita Biso. Um, everything was, was very likable. And you also, of course, knew. Yeah. It's probably a very wealthy man. Of course. Yeah. But it could also be a, one, a, a person who has his priorities right. He has saved up for, uh, because for it, it's it's an investment, but he treats the watch like it should be. Absolutely. On the wrist. Absolutely. And not in the safe. No, no. It reminds me that one day I sat with you in the in the plane as well. Uh -huh. We spent many hours in the plane together. Yes, we but did. Uh, one day there was this, I think it was two rows in front of us, there was this young guy. He was, had a beautiful tan. He was like a bodybuilder, sports school type of guy. He sat there. And he stretched his arms as well. And we both saw exactly the same at the same moment. He wore a fake royal oak. <laughs> <laughs> and that's also another way of how that influences the way you perceive that person <laughs> at that moment. <laughs> right? That's just a fake royal oak. That is so pathetic. Sorry. But it is. Don't buy a fake watch, man. No. So that that you you run the risk that you sit in front of us in an airplane one day, <laughs> and that we uh, smile a bit. But I I must admit I have noticed uh, that when my daughter graduated yeah. last summer, uh, some of her former schoolmates they work at bars and and restaurants and cafes that I frequent once in a while. The fake royal oak is around a lot. Before it was the fake Rolex, now it's the fake Royal Oak. Yeah, Those kids, they wear fake Royal Oaks. And to be honest, it's easy to fake that watch, I guess. I don't know. I but don't know. It probably is. It, it, it's, it's remarkable. You know, a, a starter watch used to be a, a fake Datejust or something. It's a fake Submariner. Yeah. Now the starter watch is a fake Royal Oak. Anyway, <laughs> we don't want to talk about fakes. It's getting inflated, the yeah, whole it is, industry. It is. Anyway, that was a short talk about... Uh, I'm not going to say changing habits. It's a dream come true. Yes, it's rose gold, a, a, a material I never wear. Uh, but it's it, this watch has just been on my wanted list, I think, since 2008. And for me, it's also a it's also a way of expressing the beautiful journey that everybody makes when collecting watches. Yeah. Your taste, that's what I like. You For me, it's its I have a, a wish list and mm -hmm. a short list and a long list, mm -hmm. but ultimately you never know what the next watch is going to be because yeah. the, the, your, your taste is changing, the opportunities are changing, and that's only beautiful. I can't wait to sit 
behind the wheel of my 1967 Series 2A 109 Land Rover, which currently is being restored. And with this watch on my wrist and drive about 60 kilometers an hour, because I think that's the maximum speed of that wonderful vintage vehicle. Um, because this is a driver's watch. It surely is. Also works on motorbikes. Yeah. So anyway, that was the Vacheron. That was the Vacheron. Latest Collecting habits. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't think we have much else to discuss right now. We have plenty to discuss, but not something... That's going to do that for the next week. Absolutely. Anyway, that was a good chat. Thank you very much for, for this personal talk in. for Christian and me. Uh, yeah. If you have any comments, what is your journey into watches? What is your wish list? And what is yeah. your in and out of your comfort zone? Mm. Let us know because that is basically what uh, the passion is all about. Yeah, Sharing your thoughts, sharing your tastes, etc. Please let us know just uh, below, that rhymed, uh, which watch was your most recent purchase and why? I'd love to hear that. That's a good one. Yeah. All right. Talk later. Be good. Bye.